about 10 years ago, I was a totally burned out medical student, just graduated, and I was wondering how I was gonna survive residency. And so this video is dedicated to that former version of myself. Uh, if, I, if there's any message that I can send to that previous version, it's that not only is there hope, but the world, your mind, your psyche, the way that you conceive of reality is so limited compared to what is possible. And so this video is to show you um, from a more rigorous clinical science perspective, how psychedelics and specifically psilocybin can help with burnout. So let's get started. On average, about 44% of people feel some unhealthy level of daily stress related to their jobs. And if we look at US physicians specifically, nearly half have reported symptoms of severe burnout, such as emotional exhaustion, cynicism, difficulty concentrating, chronic muscle tension, insomnia. And conventional treatments for burnout like talk therapy or antidepressants only target symptoms at a superficial level. Psilocybin mushroom therapy offers a promising alternative by catalyzing profound emotional insights, neuroplasticity, and a renewed sense of meaning all in a single dosing session, getting to the root causes of burnout once and for all. And the most exciting thing is that we have this rigorous clinical trial evidence showing that psilocybin significantly reduces depression and emotional exhaustion in burned out professionals. So stay with me till the end because in the next few minutes, you'll learn how one dose of psilocybin slash depression scores for clinicians. I'm Dr. Tracy Kim Townsend. I'm a licensed medical doctor and psilocybin facilitator, and I teach about the healing potential of psychedelic medicines. As of late 2021, roughly one third of U.S. clinicians have screened positive for major depression. And like I said, traditional solutions like SSRIs and talk therapy and mindfulness apps, they just don't really move the needle on burnout. A research team out of the University of Washington recruited 30 doctors and nurses who before the pandemic didn't have any diagnoses, but afterwards scored in the moderate to severe range for depression and PTSD symptoms. Besides depression and PTSD scores, several other baseline scores were checked, including standardized measures for burnout and anxiety. The participants were randomly assigned to receive either 25 milligrams of psilocybin or 100 milligrams of niacin as an active placebo, and each underwent a structured protocol consisting of two preparation sessions, one dosing session with curated music, and three integration sessions. All sessions were guided by trained facilitators. By the way, if you're wondering how much 25 milligrams of psilocybin is in terms of grams of whole dried mushrooms, I have a free dosing guide, which you can find in the comment section below. For depression, the psilocybin group improved an average of 21 points on MADRS scores versus nine points for the placebo group. So this is a 12 point advantage that was statistically significant and clinically meaningful. And for context, SSRIs typically decrease depression scores by about six to nine points, which is actually no better than placebo effect. For burnout, anxiety, and PTSD, psilocybin recipients did show a greater reduction compared to placebo, but the difference didn't quite reach the statistical significance, and this was likely due to the small sample size. Higher mystical experience scores were strongly correlated with greater reductions in depression at one, two, and four weeks after the journey session, which does suggest that the intensity of the mystical qualities of the psychedelic experience plays a role in treatment response. And this is why I emphasize the role that ceremony and ritual plays in creating a sacred container for the psychedelic journey experience, since this allows people to feel safe, open, emotionally held, which are conditions for deepening our experiences of awe, wonder, unity, and transcendence. Besides improvements in symptoms related to depression, anxiety, PTSD, and burnout, there were fascinating real life changes. Those who received the psilocybin were two and a half times more likely to change their work roles compared to those in the placebo group. And I think it's really important to note that nobody left their calling of working in healthcare, but many did restructure their careers for better mental health, and most described the experience as life-changing. Most importantly, no serious adverse events occurred. There were zero episodes of 
suicidality or psychosis, which is overall very rare. There were minor issues like headache, nausea, and transient anxiety during the experience, but all resolved without further intervention. There is no other intervention that is legal in the U.S. and available today that can shift so much after just one dosing session. And now a lot more goes into psilocybin therapy than just the dosing session. As we say, with all psychedelic journeys, the experience is guided by the preparation, the set setting and intention, and integration, with set referring to one's mindset, the setting referring to the physical space and presence of a facilitator or guide, and intention, in this case, being therapeutic as opposed to recreational, and integration referring to the process of sense-making and application of insights from a psychedelic experience into daily life, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, so that the healing or growth continues long after the session ends. This part is so crucial. From a neuroscience perspective, psilocybin works primarily through the activation of 5-HT2A serotonin receptors, which leads to a cascade of neural changes that leads to a temporary quieting of the brain's default mode network, which is often overactive in anxious and depressed states. And we see increased activity and interconnectivity in other neural networks of the brain, which leads to a higher state of entropy or fluid and flexible and interconnected modes of brain function. This is like a temporary return to the state of early childhood, where the mind is less constrained by habitual patterns and more open to new possibilities. In other words, there is increased neuroplasticity. And Dr. Robin Carhart Harris, who is a leading psychedelic scientist at UCSF, refers to this as the Rebus model, which stands for relaxed beliefs under psychedelics, where top-down control and predictive processing is loosened and bottom-up sensory and emotional material is allowed to emerge. This is how people can access suppressed emotions, gain new perspectives, and experience profound psychological shifts, which are accompanied by a deep sense of connection and meaning. This increase in neuroplasticity lingers for several weeks after the journey experience, during which time we have the ability to recondition the nervous system by rewiring outdated narratives and emotional patterns and form new habits of thought and behavior, reconnect with a sense of purpose, and relate to ourselves and to others with greater compassion and clarity. As impressive as the statistics are in this study, I love learning about the the qualitative data or the narratives behind the numbers. These are direct quotes from participants in the study, and they reflect major themes that emerged across the psilocybin group, particularly around identity, boundaries, healing, and redefining purpose. This is a quote from Will Koenig, who is a critical care flight nurse. It gave me this sense that human suffering can be transcended and transformed that letting myself be tied up in suffering that I created can only detract from the care that I provide to future patients. And Rachel Dreyer, who is an emergency department physician's assistant said, in the work that I do now, my body feels calm and quiet, deeply peaceful. This study changed my life. I think it's so important to emphasize that burnout is not a moral failing or personal weakness. It's just a sign that the system and maybe our own patterns of relating within the system are asking for something to change. What this study shows is that even one carefully facilitated experience with psilocybin can catalyze that shift. And if it can work for clinicians who worked through a worldwide pandemic, I think it holds great promise for anybody who feels burned out or chronically stressed, especially when it comes to their work. If you have any questions about the study, please do leave them in the comments below. I do read each and every one of them. And if you received any value at all from this video, I do ask for you to like and to subscribe. It helps our channel grow and follow me for more down to earth education about psychedelic medicines.